let's get under the hood of that a little bit. First one is structured data, okay? So structured data basically helps you speak to Google in the language that they actually collaborated on creating. So it's not just them, it was them, it was Bing, it was Yahoo, I think it was Yandex was in there, or Baidu, one of them was in there. And this is a language that you can use to help them better understand your content in exactly the format they wanted in. Using them helps them understand it regardless of what platform. Doesn't matter if you're on a mobile device, if you're on a desktop device, even if you're on like, you know, your, your, your Xbox or something like that, the structured data can be read and understood about what you are. Now, new types of this um, are being added all the time and changing a little bit all the time. So you don't want to automatically trust some plugin that you've installed for your structure to be correct. You, you, again, you want to keep checking these things. And we'll talk about some check tools in a minute. So how do you know what's available to use for structured data? Well, schema is where this came in from, right? Schema is actually, and I go to that page right there so you can see it. Um, it's a, a collaborative community um, with a mission to create, maintain, and promote schema for structured data on the internet. The web. And look, it was founded by Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Yandex. And this is basically a behind the scenes language that Google uses to give them, give you better results. What kind of results do they give you? Well, there's actually a really cool structured data gallery here. And this is Google's area where you can find all the different things that you can do. So what you want to do as a good SEO or a good web designer is you want to look through this data here and any piece of information that you may have on your website that you could use, you want to use. So you know, like an article, this could be a news, sports or blog article, so any blog displays in various rich results features as the title of the article and, and a larger than thumbnail image, right? a big image. How do you do it? Click on the get started button. It'll lay out how to do it. If you sell books, right? Here's a book action. Breadcrumbs, so that people can kind of find out where you are along the, along the trail. Carousel, which is only if you have recipes, a course list, a restaurant, or a movie. You know, if I, if I were to type in um, uh, movies near me or uh, like top new movies in theaters, do something like that. See that? This is the carousel here. Now, this is the carousel because you can keep going to the right. That's what they call it. It keeps showing. These are all the new movies. It's a carousel. How'd they get in there? Structured data, right? If I'm looking for, you know, like, like uh, SEO jobs near me, and I can look at here's a job here. And if I go to, you know, explore jobs, right? Well, where is this information coming from? Structured data. It all comes from this, right? And this is Land Lakes. If I type in uh, SEO jobs, Tampa, for you, probably a whole lot more. There we go. A whole lot more jobs. How to get there? Because of the structured data, okay? You can't get in here, can't be part of this unless you use the proper structured data on your website, okay? Um, so you got carousels, course info. So if you're doing courses, reviewer ratings, pricing, course details, for courses, a course list, uh, a data set for large data sets that appear in Google. You can see things in here. I'm not going to get to all the details here. A discussion forum, education Q&As. They actually have very specific Q&As for education. Uh, aggregate ratings of employers, estimated salaries, event. If you put on events, having event structured data is super helpful. A lot of the event plugins you might work, you know, use probably have it already kind of built in. Very good stuff there. Um, you have some fact-checking stuff, FAQs. This is really big. If you have FAQs, right, frequently asked questions, you want to make sure that you're using these FAQs uh, structured data. In fact, one of the things that we've seen recently is if you have multiple locations, we're starting to do this for our clients as well. If you have multiple uh, and you have like FAQs, like, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, how do I get listed in local search? Right. Or how do I get my how do I get my uh, my restaurant found on Google? Well, it's better if you have a listing in Lando Lakes, you can say, how do I get my restaurant found in Lando Lakes on Google and adding kind of the, the keyword in there and then using structured data. This is the question and the answer. So it's pretty simple to do, but you see it a lot. These Q&A's, um, uh, these FAQs, there is a, another one called a Q&A, right? So like Q&A is. P here down here, QA. So an FAQ differs from a QA, and then an FAQ has one question, one answer. Okay. So you can put the question out there, you can give it an answer. Um, so for example, um, here's my son's website, and he's got a 
FAQ. And this information, each of these things here is a Q and an A. So there's the question, click on that, there's the answer. The question, there's the answer. Behind the scenes is the structured data. And we'll go take a look at that in a minute after we get to how to, how to test these things. So what you wanna do is you wanna run through this list of things, you know, image metadata, job postings, a video for learning, a local business, right? There's things for local businesses, um, movies, uh, there's an organization FAQ. You guys should at least be using an organization and or a local uh, search um, structure data for your businesses, okay? Especially if you're if your local business, you almost have to be using it. Product, you got to make sure that you're using the product structure data. Someone asked that earlier about e-commerce stuff. That's probably when double check your product schema. Make sure it's all accurate. Make sure you're not missing anything. Make sure everything's there for you. Uh, so there's all different stuff here. There's the Q&A. If you have recipes, review snippets, uh, software app, speakable information. That this, this is really important. You know how you can... Like I tend to, I'll ask Google for something or I'll ask Alexa for something and Google will actually speak it, it'll actually say it back to you only if you got the structured data in there. This is really helpful for for text-to-speech devices as well. Um, vacation rentals, vehicle listing, video. So you want to go through this stuff. If you got a video on your website, you should be using video structured data. If you have an FAQ page, use FAQ. If you're a local business, use local business. And not using any one of them, you want to be using all of them. Okay, use every bit of structure that you can get your hands on because that's what Google is looking for. Okay, now if you're not a coder, this is coding involved. A lot of us aren't coders, but what you could do is you could use this is my one of my favorite tools. This is the uh, uh, technical SEO schema markup generator. Okay, if you go here, it basically gives you a form to fill out. So I can go here and I can pick, is it an event, an FAQ page, a how to page, a job posting? So let's go to job posting. Right. What's the job title? SEO uh, uh, specialist. You know, uh, I'll go the job description. Um, junior, oops, SEO person. I'm just making stuff up, right? Company, Steve Scott. SEO, company URL. Now, I'm not going to fill all of it out. Obviously, you can put a link to the company logo here what industry that you're in, what kind of employment is it, full-time, part, I'll say part-time, what are the work hours, you know, when is it being posted? I'm going to post it on uh, the 22nd and it expires, uh, you know, three weeks or whatever, well, well, pick a date, right? Is it remote? Sure. What country is it in? It's in the U.S. What state is it in? It's in Florida, right? And look what's happening as I'm doing this, right? As I fill out this form, the script that I need is being built for me. And all I got to do is copy that script and make sure it goes on the page that the job posting's on. That's all I gotta do. As long as that script gets on that page, whether it's in the header, in the footer, even in the body content, if it has to be, as long as it's hidden, you know, the scripting won't be there. If you're using builders like Divi or Elementor or the other ones that are out there, they usually have a code widget you could use. You slap this code in there and boom, it's on the page, you're good to go. And then when you have it right, you can test it to see, do I have it right? Am I missing anything? So you can either use schema, which is all of this data, or you can just use the rich results tool. That's the one I use because it's strictly for Google. Google has kind of like a subset of data that they look at. So if I go grab my son's FAQ page and I'll pop that into the, uh, the, the tester, this is gonna go to the page and check to see all of the schema that's on that specific page. And it's gonna come back and let me know if I'm missing anything, if anything's broken, if anything's not working right. And there we go. I got a breadcrumb. I got a site link search box. And look at that. FAQ schema. Click on that. Take a look at it. It says, hey, I've got crawl successful here. Unnamed item. I'm going to click on that. And here are the question. What certified personal trainer? There's the answer. Question two. What type of training? And look at all this. All of this is completely in line with what is here. All of these questions. Every question, every answer is in the schema. And guess what? Google knows about this schema now. They can see it and we know it because we can test it. Now, if you want to see if your competitors are using it, just put their URL in. See what they come up with, right? See what's working for them or not working for them. If I were to type in, you know, for example, I'll go type in um, of the client of mine. Something else that you could do too, if you're kind of building your schema, you could copy just the code. You could test that. You can go into the rich results, go to the code button there and just slap in the code. Paste it right in, hit test it. it, goes a lot quicker, generally. 
And it says, look, one valid detected item, one non-critical issue. It says, hey, you're missing a base field called cell. It's optional, but you should put it in there, right? It'll tell you if you have a critical error too, if you're missing something that needs to be a part of it in order to work. So you can test the code that you're creating, or you can go and test the code on someone else's website, right? Someone that you like was ranking well, check them out. Like if you're looking at... Um, So here's a client I'm on that's got four locations. So you can, and maybe they're coming up above you in ranking, right? For, for a mover in Tampa or something. Well, you can go to that website, type it in. And in a minute or two, you see what pops up. And look, there's a local business, four items. Click on that. The Riverview, Tampa, St. Pete. And then there's the generic one there. That's uh, We got to actually update that. As all well four. Click on St. Pete. There's the location, the address, phone number, what the price range is, all there. Why? because we put the structure data behind the scenes. So this is super, super important that you're using this stuff and you wanna make sure that you, know, you can use these two tools to help you out with it.